In this video, we will see how to integrate Swagger with one of our existing Spring Boot project. Swagger, our open API specification, provides nice documentation of our REST APIs, the various methods allowed, etc., which makes it easy for consumers, both humans or machines, to discover the REST APIs and its capabilities. We will also integrate Swagger UI to our project, which is a collection of HTML, JavaScript and CSS assets that dynamically generate beautiful documentation for our REST resources. We had earlier built REST-based web services in my video, Building REST-based web services with Spring Boot. We will be using this project to demonstrate Swagger integration. However, it should work with any Spring Boot project which exposes REST services. This is a very simple Spring Boot application where I have a controller person controller, which is annotated as a REST controller, which marks this class as a REST API controller. It has a base URL of slash persons, and then using slash all, it returns all the persons, and with slash ID, it looks up the given person ID. It has a simple person POJO, which has a few fields and the getters and setters for them. A person service class, which the controller calls to invoke methods. The person service class here just returns a static list of persons. However, it can interact with the database to return the objects. I have demonstrated integration with the database of this project, Spring Boot with Spring MVC, connecting to database. Let us run it as a Spring Boot app, and it runs the embedded Tomcat at port 8080 and deploys this app here. So if you go to the browser and issue HTTP localhost, colon 8080 slash persons slash all, let me format it. I'm using the Firefox plugin JSON formatter to format this output, but you can use anything you want. It shows us the list of persons and typing persons slash one returns the person with ID one. Now let us integrate Swagger to our REST services. Let's go to the pom.xml file and let me paste a couple of dependencies in here. The first dependency is for using Spring Fox Swagger 2, which integrates the Swagger support. This is the only dependency you need in this project. However, it provides the API documentation in terms of JSON response. Adding the Spring UI dependency adds a nice UI for the REST documentation and also allows us to test the REST services. Next, we have to add a configuration class by the name Swagger Config. So let us right click on the demo node choose new and then class. Name is swagger config. Now let me paste this code here. Let's fix the imports. We have annotated this class as a configuration class and enabled swagger with enable swagger to annotation. We then have the bean annotation and create the API method which returns a docket of type swagger2. We select all the APIs and all the paths and build them. That's all. We can choose to only include specific base packages and specific request mapping base URLs. But using any, we will choose all within the project. And that is all you have to do. Now we already have a main configuration class which is demo application.java which we are running here. So using the import annotation, we have to import the swagger config class here. That is all. The project is now enabled for Swagger. So let us stop Spring Boot, run it again as a Spring Boot app. Let us go to the browser and to our base URL, which in my case is HTTP localhost 8080. If we are deployed it on a standalone Tomcat, it may also have a context root for the web app like HTTP localhost 8080 slash demo, where demo is the context root for this web application. So after this base URL, including the context root, if we add slash v2 slash api hyphen docs, we see the JSON response of the documentation. Let me format it. However, I like the swagger UI. So let's append swagger hyphen UI dot html and we see a nicer page. Here it shows us all the REST services exposed by our project. I have also added the actuator to this project 
which provides rest endpoints for health check, metrics, etc. Again by just adding a single dependency and with no coding. If you want to learn it, please watch my other video, Spring Boot Health Check Using Actuators. Anyways, let us click on the show slash hide and it shows all the methods in the person controller. Let us click on get for person slash all method. It gives us an example payload and let's us try it out. Let us click it and we see the response here. It even gives us the curl command. Let us go to the person slash id get call. Let us specify an id of 1. Click try it out. We see the response. So now this URL or the other one with slash v2 slash api docs can be passed on to the consumer of our application so that they can discover the methods available. In this video, we first saw an overview of our existing Spring Boot project which produces some REST endpoints. We added the dependencies in our maven.pom.xml file for Swagger and Swagger UI. We added a configuration class for Swagger and imported it to the main configuration. And then we saw how we can access our Swagger REST documentation. Thanks for watching.